Wow, I'm afraid out here in this open field, I'm going to have terrible audio as long as that wind is blowing. It's been blowing really strongly the last couple weeks. It's not typical, especially when it gets really hot here. This air is just still. So, <laughs> of course I can't stay within the fence. If I could get water to it, I am going to try to cultivate it. And speaking of the wind, I was out here the other day with a tub full of heirloom seed mixture. It has herbs, fruit, wildflowers, flowers, vegetables, all kinds just mixed up in a big tub and it's a lot of seed. And it got blown over and got damp because the sprinkler was running at the time and the seed bin was just sitting over there. So I decided to just go ahead and cast all of them. So I did that over the weekend and I didn't water it. The ground had been moist. And I started watering on Sunday night and Monday I went to get the straw and my place didn't have it and then I found it at another store and it was way overpriced. Luckily, I came across this and got this down so I would cut back on the watering. So it's mulched. I know that there's going to be a bit of overcrowding. I hadn't decided of how far many hours I'm going to dedicate to thinning. Just maybe just pulling the best of the sprouts that I'm identifying and deciding how to move along with that. All along this fence line, cantaloupe. And what I want to try to do is create as much lush green around the garden area to help combat the, the intense summer sun. So this is also cantaloupe in these mounds. And I have a couple walkways and all of these beds prepared and a little wheat compost tea going, of course. So, cantaloupe starts here and goes down this way. We have an enormous bed. All of those mounds on the outside of the fence are squash. All of these holes dug are for the tomatoes. And I have a little nursery area right here because I don't have the space that I once had for flats and, and um, doing a whole bunch of pots. So I have tomatoes started, flowers, and more tomatoes, all different kind of variety back there. And there's eight of each kind. I went with the Livingston Gold Balls, the yellow pear, a green sausage, my emerald apple tomato, the Russian, that's a Mediterranean, and that's Earliana. And up front here by the lemon balm plant, we have Principe Borghese, and this is a ground cherry seed that's been started. There's also a giant red Belgian pepper that I sowed approximately 20 seeds. This is going to be my sweet potatoes, and so depending on what sprouts in these beds out here and how much room I think I'm going to have. We'll see how this interior space of the garden develops. There's no set plan as of right now except for, of course, tomatoes up against the fence line so I can tie them off without using a whole bunch of posts. And all of these mounds coming down this way to get the green further out and up and over the fence are the lemon apple cucumbers. So this looks like, uh, it looks horrible how bleached out and sandy it is, but this was a barren cattle field. They had grazed cattle here for a number of years, and then they got rid of the cattle, and uh, then it's just been growing wild, and every once in a while they, you know, they disc it and plow it through. So I got to go ahead to plant down there on the irrigation where they have it irrigated 
and I have mixed feelings about that because I know that they, you know, had been using chemicals on the vegetable garden. So that's my update. A few days we should start seeing green and sprouts and then I will start transplanting, moving. I do have a few things in pots in the house, not much, but they'll be moved out shortly too. I hope you're all well and getting ready to kick it in high gear for this growing season. Take care folks. Bye.